Good afternoon, my name is Ron Shaw and I'm going to be your instructor on this short video on how to create Ether channel configurations on Cisco switches. Now, as you can see up here, CCNAs and CCNP candidates are well versed in spanning tree protocol. And one of the great things about is spanning tree is that it works well with little or no additional configuration. However, there is one situation where STP works against us just a bit while it prevents switching loops and that's the situation where two switches have multiple physical connection in here as you can see in our diagrams what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about these two physical connections here now this can present a problem with spanning tree now you would think that if you have two separate physical connections between the two switches then there's twice as much data could be sent from one switch to another however here's what happened spanning tree by default is going to take one of these ports and block them now if we were trying to do this for load balances or to get more throughput, then uh, this would not be the desired effect. So what we have to do is we have to go to our Cisco switches and we have to create what we call an ether channel group or what we call a channel group. Now in the rest of the world, uh, on other vendors, they call this port lagging. So what I'd like to do is, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to start up a, a connection here and I'm going to actually do the configurations on switch number two. I've already done the connections on switch one. Now, when I do this configuration, before I sit here and, and set these up, I typically remove these connect two connections and don't have them connected until I get both sides configured on switch ones and switch two. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start putty up here, hit it up and running. We'll do a serial connection since I'm connected into the back. And as you can see here, I've already uh, configured in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit there and I'm going to configure Ethernet's Fast Zero uh, FA01 and FA02 to support uh, Ether Channel. Now, the commands are very simple. Again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Interface Range. FA0 slash 1 through dash 2. Now what this is going to do is going to allow me to do both ports at the same time. Now the command to create this is going to be channel group. Oh, Got to spell channel right. Channel group and then we're going to give it a number. I'm going to give it one mode on. Now I can sit there and do up to eight ports per channel group. Now, as you can see here, I've got the command in here, and all I have to do, and that's all it is to set it up. Now, let's go in and do a show command, show run, and we'll see this configuration in here. So, we'll go on down. Now, as you can see, I've got a uh, switch port mode, uh, and a switch port mode in its trunk on, on both of these ports. Now you can also see I've got some configurations of VLAN information. Now, that's not good, because this will mess up. So what I'm going to have to do is go back into uh, um, back into the configuration mode, and I'm going to sit there and go back into the range. I'm going to say no switch switch port access VLAN 10. So that way, and then we're going to remove the trunk too for right now. I'm just going to sit there and say no switch port uh, mode trunk, just to keep things simple here. Now. We'll come in here and do a show run again, and we'll look at our configurations. Now, all right, everything is in here, and you can see they're part of the channel group. Now, at this time, I'm going to sit there and actually plug in the physical connections between the two devices. Now, as I've said earlier, switch, uh, switch 1 has already had its configuration set up, and um, all we need to do now is make the physical connection between the two devices. Now as you can see here, Fast Ethernet came up and you can see now that the port channel groups have changed from status to up. So now it's just a very simple uh, show IP interface brief and I can actually see that my ether channel or my port channel is up. And we'll go down here to the bottom and you can see port channel is up up for that. And that's all it is to uh, create a port channel. Now, to show interface, uh, show spanning tree, what it's going to do is, you can now see my bridge ID, and right here is an important thing. Um, you can see that it's got the port group 1, or PO1, it's um, 
in a forwarding state. Now look at that cost. Had this cost been a regular normal port, because it is a 100 megabit port, it would have been a cost of 19 right here. That would have been a cost of 19. So you, now you can see that spanning tree by you or excuse me, the use of ether channels can actually lower your cost for the um, spanning tree uh, process. Now, thank you um, for uh, watching this video, and I hope you come back again and watch other videos in the f in the future. Thank you, and have a good day.